everyone. So I wanted to speak a little bit about uh, cell cycle regulation. I think at this point we know uh, the cell cycle pretty well in and of itself. Uh, but I wanted to, to speak a little bit about how it's actually regulated. So here we have uh, G1, S, G2, all of which belong to interphase of the of cell cycle. Then you have the mitotic phase shown over here. Uh, so again, all these parts are part of the cell cycle. Mitosis is the part where you actually divide the genetic material. But there are important points of regulation uh, in interphase. So I want to talk about the first point of regulation uh, and that's the G1 checkpoint. So at any point throughout the cell cycle there are, there are positions that the cell cycle can essentially shut down and say I'm not going to divide this cell. Uh, another way of saying that is if you don't if you don't have everything perfect during the process of cell division the cell is going to basically abort that division which is really important regulation mechanism right because if things are not perfect, if the genetic material is not divided perfectly, you don't want that cell divide because essentially as soon as an error is passed on, each subsequent division from that cell is going to carry that mistake. So these checkpoints are really, really important. Okay, so the G1 checkpoint. Uh, G1 checkpoint basically is going to occur just prior to division of your genetic material. So it's a it's considered a very important check important checkpoint because you do not want to to duplicate your DNA if every everything in G1 checkpoint is not okay, right? So uh, I'm being kind of vague with this on purpose, but let's say for example in G1 checkpoint if this regulation mechanism is waiting for say a certain concentration of a certain protein to accumulate. Just for example, if something biologically is, is, is off and this protein has not accumulated, it's going to tell the cell not to bother to duplicate the genetic material. And so essentially this, this mechanism shuts down the process right here. You can easily envision a situation in a cancer cell uh, where if there is some sort of mutation where you have extra DNA which gives you extra copies of certain genes and let's say that that gene encodes for a protein that pushes this, this uh, G1 process forward if you have extra copies of that of that genetic material and thus more protein, basically what the, the cancer cell is going to say is just to keep going. Okay, so uh, a lot of times when you see extra genetic material, you just see this transition. There's no stop sign, so there, there's never really any stop, uh, especially at that G1 checkpoint. Another way of visualizing it is this. Uh, so if you have your, your G1 checkpoint here and all all requirements are met, you proceed and you pass the G1 checkpoint and you head into S phase to duplicate your DNA. Uh, the green light is essentially uh, do you have required materials? Usually this is some sort of protein signal. If you don't, basically the cell will arrest. It'll go into that G0 arrest and it'll stop. It will not proceed most of our cells are actually in this G0 arrest. They're not actively dividing. Okay, so that's a normal situation. In a cancer cell, basically if you have the ability to produce additional proteins, whatever is pushing this cell cycle forward at G1 checkpoint, basically you're never going to get that stop sign. You're just going to proceed, to proceed, to proceed, to proceed. Okay, so that's, that's a basic summary for a, 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 a mutation in a cancer cell which will would push the cycle forward and repeat uh, this duplication without without control. Okay, so that's one of the molecular mechanisms of cancer. Another example occurs at this G2 checkpoint, and I, I like this example a lot. Uh, this G2 checkpoint involves things that are called cyclins. So you have a cyclin right here, and uh, these things called CDK. So CDK stands for uh, it's a cyclin dependent kinase 
And although we haven't talked about kinases yet, they're, they're proteins that, that basically participate in the phosphorylation of other proteins. Okay, so phosphorylation events are critical in biochemical signaling pathways. Uh, so you, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of kinases. This one's called the cyclin-dependent kinase, which basically gives a little bit of a clue as to the function uh, of this particular um, kinase, right? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a kinase that phosphorylates things, but it's also dependent on cyclins right here. So normally in the cell, you do not have cyclins. Cyclins are, are proteins that basically cycle. They, they're, they're presence or absence accumulates and, and breaks down depending on a part of the cell cycle that you're in. So cell cyclins start to, to accumulate here in, in S phase. So you'll start to see a little bit of a cyclin activity. That cyclin presence will become more abundant the further you get into G2. Okay, So by the middle of G2, you have uh, enough cyclin to basically form a cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinase complex. This particular cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinase is, now it's, again, it's very vague because there are hundreds of cyclin-dependent kinases and hundreds of different cyclins. This particular example comes together to create MPF. So MPF stands for um, maturation promoting factor it can also stand for, I guess, M phase promoting factor. The point of it is that you need this complex to come together in late G2 in order to proceed to M phase. So in order to go from here to late G2 to M phase, you need to develop a lot of this MPF. Okay, this again is a checkpoint. It's basically a checkpoint saying, have all the conditions been met to faithfully and, and, and accurately perform cell division okay so if you don't have enough cyclin dependent actually cyclin dependent kinase is always there if you don't have enough cyclin basically you're saying that the process should not proceed because the the cell is not physiologically in a state that it's going to perform cell division accurately and faithfully so let me repeat that again cyclin dependent kinases are always present it's the cyclins that are regulated okay so once you get enough cyclins accumulated this complex will form forming MPF. MPF gets you over this G2 checkpoint and into mitosis. Once in mitosis and everything is complete, you want to shut that complex down. Let me be specific about that. So if you do not break down this MPF complex, stop and think about what would happen in a cell. Okay, so if the presence of my, uh, uh, maturation promoting factor signals that okay to go ahead into mitosis if if you have that constantly basically you get into a situation where cells are dividing uncontrollably so that's another uh, example of a cancer where checkpoints are being disregarded they're being ignored and proceeding so we need to break this complex down so that these cyclins are essentially degraded they're broken down so that this complex this complex's activity is inhibited Okay, so without the, the cyclin here to make the complex, you do not have MPF, and thus you do not have MPF activity. Okay, so again, we're in a situation now where if you have a cancer cell whose genetic material is altered in a way that they have extra genes to create extra things like cyclins, uh, if you're making cyclins at an at a excessive rate, basically what you're going to be able to do in that point is to to pass this G2 checkpoint even if the cell conditions are not met to, to do this accurately. Okay, so this is a situation where, where cancer would arise. You'd overcome that checkpoint without without really meeting the requirements, and then you just basically go through this cell cycle over and over and over again. Okay. Uh, so again, usually what you see in cancer cells is that uh, there's some sort of extra genetic material extra genetic material leads to extra production of proteins whatever those proteins do you're able to do in excess because there are more of them okay so that's one of the primary ways that that, that cancer pushes itself forward is, is by making uh, extra proteins that push the cell forward that encourage cell division uh, you could easily envision a situation where if you have extra genetic material that encodes say a growth factor 
uh, once that gene is expressed and made into RNA and translated from RNA into protein, that that, um, that growth factor that is made from that its presence would just stimulate the cell to grow and to grow and to grow. And in fact, that's what you see in many cancers is this uh, unabated growth because of the excessive production of growth factors. You can imagine that if, if a cell is ha, has a chromosome that has extra genetic material that encodes, say, a growth factor receptor, if this happens, you have extra growth factor receptors, thus you're able to, to receive uh, more of a stimulus from that growth factor. Okay, so if you have extra growth factor receptors, that's just as bad as having extra growth factor. Uh, so that would also push the cancer cell forward, uh, stimulating uh, cell division, and then an excessive accumulation of, of uh, cancer cells. So that's essentially it. That's essentially the, the molecular control mechanisms for cancer cells. There's another way of envisioning this on this slide right here. I really like this one as well. Basically what you're seeing is the actual cycling of the cyclin concentration. So again, uh, cyclins come and go. As they are increasing, they reach a critical point where MPF activity can take off and, and, and uh, cross you over from the G2 into mitosis. So the presence of this MPF correlates with, uh, presence of cyclin correlates with MPF activity. Okay, so then the cyclin breaks down. Once the cyclin breaks down, you don't even see the MPF activity here because it's off the scale. Okay, so you'll have M you'll have low levels of cyclin for a long time. Then cyclin starts to build again, starts to build again, and as it's building, you're starting to see the MPF activity also start to increase. Okay, so they they correlate. Without this cyclin activity, you do not have you don't have this uh, MPF activity. So in order to get this peak MPF activity, you have to have peak cyclin concentration, and then subsequently they would both decrease at equal rates. And this is a cycle that you go through for each round of cell division. So in G1, you don't see uh, any cyclin at all. It's way down here, and you, in fact, don't even see MPF activity. In S phase, you don't uh, really see a lot of uh, cyclin. It starts to build during S phase, but you're still not seeing MPF activity. In G2, especially late G2, you're going to see that cyclin concentration really start to peak, and with that, comes the onset of MPF activity. Okay, so that in mitosis, when both uh, uh, cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinases are present, you get that MPF complex and thus the MPF activity. Okay, so spend a few minutes talking about that to yourself, and uh, you know if you have questions on it, come and see me. Okay, take care.